Good morning, YouTube. I plan on shooting a shop tour video for you today before I make a mess in the shop. I got a lot of work lined up this afternoon and I clean it up and I want to show it to you while it's nice and clean. I built this shop about a year ago with the help of a lot of friends. Uh, previously, I was working out of a carport and a closet. Um, and so a lot of work's been done. There's a lot of things I love about the shop. There's a bunch of things that I would like to improve also. So I hope you'll uh, maybe learn some things for your own shop, see some tricks, things that I've done, and hopefully you'll leave me some comments and tell me how I can fix some of the issues that I see. So uh, thanks for watching and um, yeah, let's look at the shop. All right, this is the first thing you see when you walk in the door. <clears throat> You're looking at a uh, Powermatic 12 inch joiner and a Grizzly 16 inch planer. Uh, typically when I arrive home with solid wood lumber, I am bringing it straight in through the door to do some milling. Um, if it's really long, I'm probably going to cross cut it outside with a jigsaw real quick just to get it manageable, um, but not to an exact size and then get it square first. Um, these are both new machines pretty much. The Powermatic took me a few hours to set it up and get it all um, really trued up. The, uh, the planer I got second hand, obviously it's a little, it's got a few years on it, but it works great. They're both straight blade cutters. Um, worked real hard to get dust collection right to where I need everything. And um, this is basically where I start off doing the, the bulk of the milling work right when I walk in the door, especially because I want to take a light pass before I <clears throat> stack and sticker the lumber um, and let it acclimate to my shop just a little bit. So uh, this is sort of station number one. All right, this is sort of station number two. It's just a back wall of storage, my uh, drill press and my miter saw. My miter saw has um, probably the worst attempt at a dust uh, collection system ever. It's still a work in progress. It's kind of piecemealed together one day out of frustration, but um, it'll be definitely something that I rebuild here in the short, short term. Uh, I do like the bench. I think it's modeled after um, Mark Spagnuolo's uh, video. He's got a series on how to build something very similar. Um, again, me and my friend kind of put it together one afternoon. And I do like that the drill press and the miter saw are all at the same level. They don't interfere with real long boards. Um, it does, it is a sort of a place that tends to collect things. Um, Eventually, I'd like to have the wood storage in a different location and I'd like to be able to use that back wall for either more cabinetry or just open storage of stuff. Uh, but for right now, that's all the space I've got. This so next view is, uh, you can still see the miner saw. He's right over here. So you kind of know where you're at. Um, this is my seller's workbench. I, I built it. One of the first things that I built, um, I used to have a tool cabinet where I stored everything in, but um, because of the wall space in here and the windows, I traded a friend for that little trunk style um, anarchist tool chest. Uh, it works great, fits right under my bench, and I don't use all the hand tools all the time. I tend to keep the things that I typically use on the bench so I can grab them and use them quickly. Um, and then if I need to dig something out, I can dig it out. Uh, I like the bench a lot. It's a simple design. Um, I've you know, put a few dog holes in it. The vise is really handy. It's, it's not you know, a big leg vise. It's not bench crafted yet. Um, but <clears throat> for starting out, a vise like that is really easy to use and it's quick. Um, and if you run into problems with work holding, you can always use clamps like Paul Sellers does. Uh, I really like the vent bench. It's really solid and it was a really fun kind of first project years ago. Um, <clears throat> I like the natural light at the workbench. It is helpful and it's, it's, you know, pleasing when you're working there. You can open up the windows. You can also keep an eye on what's going on in the neighborhood. The only downfall is the windows take up such a big space in front of you that there's, you got to get creative with storing stuff. Um, so yeah, I use the tool well a lot on it. Overall, love the bench. It was fun to build. I'll eventually build something new, but for right now it absolutely serves its purpose. All right, so we are now standing right next to the, that Paul Sellers Burke bench that we just looked at. Uh, and you're looking at my table saw. It is a three horse uh, 220 saw stop. I like to play guitar and I don't want to lose any fingers. So um, really enjoy this saw and its safety uh, features. Um, also have the router table over there on the left with the built-in downdraft box. It really keeps the mess at a minimum. Um, I enjoy having it. And also you can take off that 
the router fence and it's just an extension of the saw itself, which is really, really nice, I'm quite spoiled. I also um, saw a video of Jason Bentz not too long ago where he was using the uh, Jessam stock guides, which are on my, my fence there. I really love those for long boards. It, it helps me focus on feeding the wood correctly and doing it safely. It absolutely reduces your chance of kickback and it holds it very tight to the fence. They're really nice um, and it's nice because you can take them on and off. So if they're in the way, if you need to use a different uh, tall fence for different cutting operations, you can just slide them off the track and put them off to the side. Um, <clears throat> the wood storage over on your left there, I don't like that. That's something I want to improve. It hogs up a lot of space for what it does. Uh, it was nice when I had a carport and I could move it around and roll it, but now it just sort of hogs up space. So I'd like to rebuild that um, against a wall or repurpose another space for wood storage. The last thing that I built in the most recent stop edition is that little MFT table. Um, I use the PARF guide to do all the holes and it's just made out of three quarter MDF. It's a really nice outfeed table and I have some different Festool tools that I've picked up recently and they work great with uh, work holding. The traditional Paul Seller style workbench, um, it does great work holding for some of the traditional hand tools, but some of the more modern power tools, I find that the, the dog hole system um, is a little bit more advantageous for holding down little things and using a domino or, or putting down a crosscut section for your track saw. Uh, so I just built that. I really like it. It's smaller than my old outfeed table, which is nice because my shop's pretty small and being able to move all the way around the table is really nice and saves me from, you know, marching back and forth across the shop all the time. At this point, we're kind of looking back the way we came. Um, I have my bandsaw and, and uh, kind of tucked in next to that pillar there. Um, I love the bandsaw. It's great. It's really easy to pull out, move around, get in the right direction. Um, again, small shop, so you got to be creative with how you use the space. Uh, I put that center pillar there because I want a dust collection that would come down to the jointer, the bandsaw, and the table saw with the router table. Um, and I like it. It does sort of constrain me to where I can move things and how far I can scoot things over, but it's sort of a necessary evil at this point. Um, I also hang up my little safety things and of note is the elephant that is half sticking out of the post. Uh, his hands got chewed off by a dog and so I tend to hang all my safety equipment on his head just to remind me to be safe and not end up like him and lose my hands. So <laughs> little things to remind you to stay safe are, are pretty good. I, uh, I was a helicopter pilot for almost two decades in the army and so I have a pretty healthy fear of things that have blades and spin fast. So that's the shop tour. I uh, hope you picked up a few things and just got to enjoy my space. Uh, it's a work in progress. I always say keep improving your fighting position. There's, there's always things I'm coming up with week after week to improve my setup, improve my workflow, um, get things out of my way that I'm not using and get things into better positions. So um, I plan on doing actually a series of shops in the near future. I've got a bunch of friends in the local area that are all normal guys and they have normal guy shops with normal things. And I always find looking at their shops interesting. I always learn things. So I think there'll be a few videos coming up where I go around to some different friends shops and show you what other normal guys have for their setups. I think it's pretty interesting. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, again, I'm a new YouTuber. I'm about to retire from the army after 20 years and uh, I really enjoy this hobby. I've got a huge passion for it right now. And I hope to make it a business that will keep me home with my wife and my children and at least until they go off to college. So uh, thank you for your support and I hope you'll see tons more from me in the near future. Bye.